Ops Admin David here from Trivial Solutions IO. So in the last video, we're almost to the end of like a basic skeleton of how, you know, what I prefer, what tools, my stack that I run infrastructure that works real, really well. So in the last video, we covered free last part. Like I'll talk about more things in detail, but this is like, will be the ending of, you know, the whole picture, like the broad view of things. So in the last video, we spoke about how to run workloads on Nomad, right? So knowing that, we can move on to the final part, which is monitoring, logging, and alerting. And why Nomad Jobs has to be before that, because a lot of components, you know, once I build the base layer, the foundation of the infrastructure where we can run Nomad containers, then I can use that to run a lot of things that I will display in this board. Like most of these things that I run here will be run as simply Nomad Jobs. So I no longer need to worry about changing provisioning to do stuff. Only in small part, like uh, I'll talk about that, what is deployed in provisioning layer. But most of these things will just run as Nomad jobs, right? And I use dedicated system namespace, like it's a practice in Kubernetes as well to have system namespace, right? So let's talk about, okay, how will we gather metrics? And for some people, this will be like, oh, you know, it's boring, like ABC, we know all that. And yeah, a lot of people use very similar stuff. So I will not be like, uh, I will not show you something groundbreaking or new, right? I'll show use tested things. A lot of people know this, but just for the sake of completeness, I'll just show it to you. So for metrics... Uh, I use uh, to collect system-wide metrics. I use Prometheus and Victoria metrics and how Prometheus works for those who don't know. It just uh, makes HTTP requests and slash metrics endpoints and collects the metrics and uh, gathers them into database. And why like some people say, oh, you know, Prometheus and Victoria metrics are the same, but the way I use it, like by default Prometheus it takes more storage, it's uh, slower to query stuff, and uh, I use both of these for different things. So like Prometheus, it only evaluates alerts, right? Alert conditions. And it has little data, like uh, 14 days by default, and I keep it at that small data. But for long-term storage and for querying, for visualization, I use Victoria metrics. So, how I do this, I run three instances of Nomad job and uh, on one group, on one server, there's one Prometheus and Victoria metrics instance running. And what happens is Prometheus scrapes stuff and then forwards those to Victoria metrics as well for long-term storage, right? So I use both of these. Victoria metrics is great. It's based on the uh, ClickHouse database. But uh, as I heard, ClickHouse did, Clickhouse database was tried to do, I really like Clickhouse by the way, was tried to attempt it to store metrics, but you know, Victoria metrics guys just said, oh, you know, this, this doesn't work like that. We'll create the same thing as Clickhouse, but uh, it will be specific for metrics. So it's, this thing is very fast. It loads Grafana dashboards quickly. Of course, we run three instances for high availability. Every Prometheus instance scrapes separately, right? And uh, yeah, like I mentioned, I use Prometheus for evaluating alert rules and that only. I don't use Prometheus to show in Grafana metrics. And for long-term storage, it, that's where Victoria metric shines and that is what is queried from Grafana when you, you need to visualize everything. And like just one thing, uh, some people may not know this. I, I see some people that like to do this. I don't know why. Some people want to edit Prometheus YAML, adding targets uh, by hand. What I just do is there's a config you can say scrape console services and just uh, whatever service has stack Prometheus, those are your scrape targets. That's it. So if you add Nomad job, 
you know that service appears it starts being scraped automatically you don't need to do anything if you stop that job that service is deregistered from nomad again you don't need to do anything so it's it's just uh, an autopilot at that point and uh, alerting nothing new here like alert manager comes from like the same it's almost part of no uh, almost part of prometheus but in, it's just separate service so you can configure this send messages to slack telegram you know whatever and of course you deploy three also for high availability and uh, they can they will figure themselves out a leader and will deduplicate uh, alerts so you don't get stuff twice you know so yeah and okay so alerting it this is really st standard most people will say oh you know these are abcs but again I, I just want to be explicit and thorough not to like you know just so it would be there All right so for logs i use uh, the latest and greatest with uh, my favorite programming language written uh, it's a vector logging tool not logging tool but it it forwards logs so how do i do this this is where i need to touch provisioning layer a little bit which we should avoid so vector runs on every instance every server and whatever docker container is there and whatever system d unit is there it just forwards all those to elastic search and i usually you know just start small and of course uh if once you get better you might need to add it this used to be kafka for me but uh, then i learned about nets and it's much simpler it's very performing queue if we get a little bigger where we can't directly push to elastic search we can add nets jet jet stream queue in between and then load messages there and at its own speed the uh, elastic search cluster can be pump those logs and of course yeah i'll mention i run elastic search for logs there's i start with three instances and i only scale up if uh, i need if i see the need you know i've given enough ram i've given enough cpu and uh, if then i see that you know okay it's no longer it no longer can handle the load then i'll start adding more instances but in the start start small and build as you need it don't do premature optimization like run 100 instances you don't know really if it work if it will handle the load if you have the load then you know you can add more and more right and there's also alternative grafana loki i mentioned this in previous video but like i said I didn't like that Grafana Loki is not a standalone as Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch, you can deploy three standalone instances with their own ZFS data sets and things just work. And uh, Loki, you need to build Ceph storage to emulate S3. I didn't try doing that practically, but I saw the docs. I tried to look at it a few times. Oh, you know, maybe this will be more lightweight alternative. And I just got discouraged that <laughs> it's it's more complex setup than you know i just run now with elastic search so maybe one day if if loki gets like a storage engine like it becomes like elastic you know it has its own files and then it can work reliably then i may try that but so far i prefer elastic me personally all right and so the last part is visualization again nothing new probably the most popular <laughs> dashboard visualizer in the world right now grafana I except one caveat like i mentioned i use victoria metrics for long-term metric storage so i point grafana to use victoria metrics as well and it's very fast to query it's long-term storage you know and i don't use prometheus not to prometheus only evaluates alerting rules and that's it no it doesn't use any more cpu but it just evaluates alerting rules and for visualizations for grafana use victoria metrics you know because it compresses data better it queries work faster and etc right and of course if you have elastic search you will usually have kibana to view logs and you know i just uh, run this 
Oh, you can. I didn't mention Grabana. I run a Postgres instance, a Patroni, so it would be highly available, like two instances where you can switch a master and then you can run Grafana instance anywhere and it becomes stateless. So that's how I, I didn't write this down. I did, just popped into my mind. And Kibana is just, uh, you know, you can run one or more instances. It's also stateless because state is an elastic search and this is a stateful service. Like you create data sets and uh, labels. Like I mentioned how to run uh, Nomad jobs in previous video and how to run Nomad jobs. So you can figure this out. Like, how to do it so so yeah so that's that's high level overview for a lot of people <laughs> this this will not be like something new or groundbreaking but just for the sake of completeness I just throw this in there you know just so there wouldn't be any ambiguity and stuff okay so if you have your tips and tricks suggestions comments feel free to leave them as a comment below and this was David from TrivialSolutions.io and I'm signing out. Peace.